subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 3rd of December. India on alert as cases of Omicron COVID-19 variant ring alarm bells. Pakistan embassy in Serbia mocks PM Imran on Twitter, asks for salary, officials say account hacked. And Sri Lankan citizen lynched in Pakistan CR court over alleged blasphemy. And now for all the details. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia told the parliament on Friday that the country is prepared to fight Omicron. A day after India reported first two cases of the new variant in southern Karnataka state. The health ministry in a statement said the severity of the COVID-19 disease from the Omicron variant in the country could be low because of vaccination and high exposure to the Delta variant. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia on Friday said that the country is prepared to fight Omicron. As authorities are on alert a day after India detected first two cases of the new COVID-19 variant in southern Karnataka state. While speaking on the COVID-19 situation in the country, Mandavia apprised the parliament that the patients have shown mild symptoms and their contacts have been isolated. He informed over 16,000 passengers from at-risk countries have been tested at airports and 18 have found positive. He said states have been asked to ramp up inoculation, while a decision on booster dose will be taken soon after scientific advice. Earlier in the day, the health ministry in a statement said, the severity of the COVID-19 disease from the Omicron variant in the country could be low because of vaccination and high exposure to the Delta variant. Bharat Sarkar Dwara Rajya Sarkar ko sabhi awashak saavdhaniya barat ne ki sujaab diya gaya hai taki is case ke dwara Omicron variant ka sankraman aage na badhe. At Chris country se aa rahi flight ki sabhi yatriyo ki RT-PCR testing ki ja rahi hai. As of Friday, India reported 99,976 active cases of COVID-19. As many as 84% of the population have received at least one dose in the South Asian nation, with more than 125 million people due for a second by the end of November, as the government pushes more to get inoculated in the face of Omicron. In yet another major embarrassment for Pakistan, the country's own embassy in Serbia has called out Prime Minister Imran Khan over rising inflation back home and for delaying payment of salaries of Pakistani diplomats through a Twitter post. The tweet was, however, later deleted and Pakistan's foreign ministry stated the Twitter account was hacked. Raising deep anguish over rising inflation back home, Pakistan's own embassy in Serbia on Friday trolled Prime Minister Imran Khan on Twitter for delaying the payment of salaries of embassy staffers for the past three months. In the post through its official Twitter account, the embassy shared a parody video song by Pakistani artist Saad Alavi taking swipe at increasing price of basic commodities in the country. The song gives musical twist to Imran Khan's signature phrase, you don't need to panic, and mocks him saying, if soap becomes costlier, don't use. If wheat becomes dearer, please don't eat. However, the tweet was later deleted and Pakistan's foreign ministry stated that the Twitter account was hacked and the post was not by the embassy in Serbia. The Pakistan government has been grappling with high inflation that is particularly hitting the country's poor and middle class. According to a report by Statistics Bureau this week, inflation rose to 11.5% from 9.2% in November, the highest spike in the last 20 months. The per capita income also increased to 1260 US dollars in 2021. In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistan's President Dr. Arif Alvi on Thursday ratified the election reform bills passed in Parliament last month that provide for holding next general election through electronic voting machines as well as right of vote to overseas Pakistanis. The opposition parties had termed the passage of the legislation as a black day as the government bulldozed its despite protests. Pakistan's President Dr. Arif Alvi on Thursday signed the Elections Amendment Bill 2021 passed by the ruling PTI government through the parliament last month despite protests by the opposition. The bill provides for holding of next general election through electronic voting machines or EVMs as well as granting the right of vote to overseas Pakistanis. President Alvi said the EVMs were meant to minimize human involvement in elections and get rid of the possibility of double stamping and rejection of votes. He described the electoral reform as a big step as it would end allegations of rigging. लोगों को भरोसा करना चाहिए इस बात पर कि जी ये जरूरी और हो जाएगा और फिर कभी-कभी कुछ लोग ये कहते हैं कि जी इतने एडवांस तरीके से कोई एडवांसमेंट नहीं है तो सिंपल सी बात है इतने एडवांस तरीके से तुम वैसे करो जैसे हिंदुस्तान ने किया 25 साल के अंदर वो यहां आए हैं the opposition parties had termed the passing of the electoral reforms as a black day after the government bulldozed the amendments in parliament's joint session last month despite protest opposition leader shibash sharif termed evms as evil and vicious machines and accused the government of not being sincere in creating a consensus on the electoral reforms. The general elections in Pakistan is scheduled to be held in 2023. Moving on. In a gruesome incident, a Sri Lankan national was tortured to death in Pakistan's Sialkot city and his body was set on fire after a mob attacked the foreign national over blasphemy allegations. According to reports, the Sri Lankan citizen Priyantha was employed as general manager of a local factory, Rajko Industries. The incident took place on Wazirabad Road in Sialkot, where the factory workers lynched Priyantha, vandalized the factory and blocked the traffic in protest. Videos shared on social media showed people surrounding the burning corpse. Meanwhile, the police have been dispatched to keep the situation in control as Punjab Chief Minister Usman Buzdar took notice of the lynching and termed it a very tragic incident. Pakistan has become a den of individuals belonging to minority religions being murdered over charges of blasphemy. Blasphemy laws in the Muslim-majority Pakistan have long been criticized by global rights groups who claim they unfairly target religious minorities. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban-nominated envoy to the United Nations, Suhail Shaheen, has criticized the move by a UN panel to defer the decision on who will represent Afghanistan at the world body. UN acceptance would be a step toward the international recognition the Taliban has been seeking for their new government as Afghanistan faces a worsening economic and humanitarian crisis. Taliban's permanent representative designate to the UN Suhail Shaheen has condemned the move by the nine-member UN Credentials Committee to defer a decision this week on who will represent Afghanistan at the United Nations, meaning the Afghan Taliban will not be allowed into the world body for now. Shaheen, who is also the Islamic Emirates Doha-based spokesman, said on Twitter, the UN had deprived the people of Afghanistan of their legitimate right. He said the representation was needed to resolve issues of Afghan people and maintain positive interaction with the world. This comes as Ghulam Isakzai, the current UN ambassador appointed by the ousted Afghan government, has also asked to keep the seat. The committee will now send its report on the credentials of all members to the UN General Assembly for approval before the end of the year. UN acceptance would be a step toward the international recognition the Taliban has been seeking for their new government as the country faces a worsening economic and humanitarian crisis and their assets abroad remain frozen. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said the Taliban's desire for international recognition is the only leverage other countries have to press for an inclusive government and respect for rights particularly for women in Afghanistan. Sri Lanka's health authorities on Friday said they have identified the first Omicron patient in the country. The health ministry said the new COVID-19 variant was identified in a Sri Lankan national who
who had recently returned from South Africa. Dr. Hemanta Herath, Deputy Director of Health Services, told reporters, As a result of our vigilance, we have been able to identify an Omicron patient following gene sequencing lab tests. There is no need for us to panic over this. We are dealing with the situation. Sri Lanka on Thursday recorded 735 new coronavirus cases and 27 deaths. The overall case number stands at 565,471. Meanwhile, as Omicron, the new variant first detected in Botswana, has put nations on alert, Sri Lankan government has said that it has taken all necessary measures in preventing the entry of the newly found variant as many countries were closing their borders for arrivals. The Minister for Sports and Youth, Namal Rajapaksa, told the parliament that health guidelines have been tightened at all the airports with the health history of passengers being checked upon arrival. Sri Lanka also made it mandatory to wear face masks and maintain social distance. Anyone defying the rules will face arrest and a jail term. Konak Festival serves as a platform for renowned classical dancers in India to showcase cultural depths through various dance forms. The elegant and charming classical dancers are mesmerizing visitors at the five-day dance extravaganza at the famous Konak Sun Temple in eastern Odisha state. The five-day Indian classical dance extravaganza Konark Festival 2021 is underway in eastern India's Odisha state. On Thursday, Indian classical dancers mesmerized visitors at the open-air auditorium with the backdrop of the iconic Konark Sun Temple. The evening featured Satriya dance that originated in the medieval era. It is a dance drama performance art with origins in Hindu god Krishna-centered Vaishnavism monasteries of northeastern Assam state. The later half hosted an Odissi dance performance focused on five Hindu goddesses namely warrior, educator, wealth, motherhood and love. Another Odissi performance was presented in a form of prayer to the sun god encouraging it to rise and shine. बहुत सौभाग्य मिला कि इतना बड़ा सन टेंपल कोनारक सन टेंपल के आगे हमने अपना डांस की प्रस्तुति की तो ये फीलिंग बहुत डिवाइन है ऐसा लग रहा है कि भगवान से कनेक्ट कर पाए द फर्स्ट सीन कंसिस्ट ऑफ सूर्य अपीयरिंग विद हिज सेवन हॉर्सेस बट इट वाज क्वाइट अ सरप्राइज बिकॉज़ इन द मिडल ऑफ द डांस ही हैड सूर्य कमिंग एंड दैट वाज रियली अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ कोरियोग्राफी एंड ही इज अ मास्टर कोरियोग्राफर the choreography was really good. Indian classical dance form of Odissi is believed to have been originated in temples and is predominantly performed by women for expressing religious stories and spirituality. Kunak festival serves as a platform for renowned classical dancers in India to showcase India's cultural depth through various dance forms. Organized every year between December 1 and December 5 since 1986, the festival will come to a close on Sunday. Kalari Paya 2 is considered to be one of the oldest martial arts disciplines in the world and used to be practiced by warriors in southern Indian states. Because of COVID-19 in 2020, most traditional martial arts schools in India were shut and did not fully recover after the first unlock. As the coronavirus cases have lowered across the country, the practitioners are confident that their preservation efforts will again peak. India's traditional martial arts form Kalari Payatu is opening new doors of spiritual attainment for the seekers as they rediscover their passion for their ancient practice after the COVID-19 induced halt. Kalari Payatu involves training with weapons and a freestyle as well. The training begins with a huge baton which is nearly 6 feet long and then eventually moving to a smaller wooden weapons like Muchon, a small staff and Ota, a curved stick. The martial arts form also involves power yoga and massaging routines. Kalari Payatu is a very ancient wisdom of India as well as Kerala. It helps to improve the general health in physical as well as mental level. It has an element of sacred worship of Lord 
పరశురాం most traditional martial arts schools in india were shut because of covid-19 in 2020 and did not fully recover after the first unlock however the practitioners are confident that their preservation efforts will again peak as the corona virus cases have lowered across the country kalari payatu is considered to be one of the oldest martial arts disciplines in the world and used to be practiced by warriors in india southern kerala and tamil nadu states well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night tag tv brings you daily news bulletin from india breaking news and views from india